How do you there guys and welcome back to Edgar TV where today we're going to be discussing what goes on at the end of a darts match. Now we see various ways in which games end. We'll obviously see the embrace of the handshake unless something's gone on in the game with a little bit of needle. Nowadays we see about seven or six different cuddles and some kissing and all sorts of different things at the end of the game. But what we do always get is a little bit of a chat between the players. And if you've ever wondered what goes on and what is said in these moments, today I am I'm going to give you the answer to that now i have been on the pdc professional tour for 11 years starting in 2011 up to 2022 so i've seen and heard quite a lot of these different conversations they tend to just fall into a certain category and i'll let you know what those categories are but also i'll let you know what michael van gerwen said to me after our match on itv in the players championship finals at the back end of this video so we're going to start off with the most common one which is the sympathetic handshake. Now, in this situation, the player that's won would have felt they didn't play their best, so they'll be like, ah, oh, it, it wasn't a good game. As if that's comforting, telling them it wasn't a good game, but they still lost. And also, for the opponent, be like, oh, you didn't play your best, or you played better than this. That's sort of the sympathetic d -ref. You see this a lot. I would say this actually accounts to about 70% of the sort of handshakes at the end of games and sort of those post-match debriefs where, I don't know, it, it, I suppose it's trying to be comforting, it's trying to be a friendly face in that situation, but when you actually sit here like I am now and you say, it, it wasn't a good game and be still lost and I won, I kind of see that as counterproductive actually, but yeah, the most common post-match debrief. On the opposite side of that, we've got the I was just in a battle reaction which often you can see because the two players will embrace in some form of cuddling or about 17 different handshakes and one raising the other one's arm they'll shake hands they'll go shake the marks hands they'll shake hands again they'll get the drink they'll have a drink they'll shake hands they'll get the case they'll shake hands. you know the ones that's where both players recognize that they both played their best and one of them just came out on top at the end of the day. And every time they're going around this, they'll sort of reminisce throughout good shots and good moments. So, but, ah, oh, that 180 hit was huge. I, I, I set myself up on 100 thinking I was going to come back and you, you at 180 left 32, you really pressured that shot. And they're the sort of things that will be positive debrief of moments throughout the game that will sort of be told. And as they're going around, they'll sort of remember different bits. So they'll go over and shake his hand. They'll be like, oh, remember that leg? You took out a 170 like Edgar did to beat Gary Anderson. The, these are the sort of things that will be going on throughout every single one of those handshakes. Positive debriefs. The final type of debrief that is very common is the one that sort of pinpoints and picks up moments. We had the one a second ago about a positive where they're both just saying about great moments that happen within the game. We then have the type of debrief that includes moments or shots that changed the complexion of the game. Where someone might say, ah, if you'd have hit that double 16, I was gone. Or if you would have hit that and I'd gone three legs clear, there's always sort of a moment in a game that sort of defines which direction the game's going to go. It's normally something that will either level up a game or someone gets a break of throw, someone misses a couple of darts to hold their throw, and those sort of moments tend to get logged in the players' minds. And this will either come from the winner or the loser. The winner will say, oh, if you'd have hit that double there, that would have possibly changed the game. Or the loser will turn around and say the same sort of thing. So be like, ah, if I didn't miss those three darts, it would have been a a closer game or it could have gone a different direction and they're the sort of the rest of the bulk of the way in which these go it's very rare that that second example where both players feel like they played well comes around it's normally one of the others it's actually a lot of the time players slagging off the game they've just been involved in whether they won or lost the game a lot of the time people just don't think that they played to the best of their ability and you can see this a lot nowadays where especially with some of the younger players who sort of walk around shaking their head all the time and sort of getting frustrated with it you can sort of see that it's coming to that and we see this on all levels i've commentate quite a lot in the mode of super series i see people coming off disappointed after winning based on the average so again that's what we can see in this situation but i reckon a few of you have been sitting around waiting to know what did michael van gerwin say to me after we played each other in the players championship finals up at minehead in front of a sellout arena 
I do think Michael had more to do with that than me, but I'll take it, I'll take it. Thank you for the house, Michael. Thank you for the house. But what did he say to me? It, it's quite ironic because you're here right now on Edgar TV and that's exactly what Michael Van Gerwen said. Now, the original, very first episode of Edgar TV was around this game. I interviewed myself and put it out there on YouTube. Michael saw this. And he said to me at the end of our game, he said, Machu, you keep doing your podcast. This this is the podcast, by the way. You keep doing your podcast because it's mm, funny. You can imagine what that word was. I'm not going to say it sort of thing. But he said he told me to keep doing this. And then so we can say this is the Michael Van Gerwen endorsed Edgar TV. That's what he said to me after my game. He, he said a few other things to me in the past. Um, certainly... When I played him in the Players' Championship quarterfinals recently, about a year or two ago, uh, that was my last sort of real Pro Tour event as such as a tour card holder, I was in the quarterfinals. And there's a good example of contrasting sort of reactions from people at the end of the game. Michael Van Gerwen called me something, which I can't repeat on here. And it, it was all done in jest, it was done in jest. But he knew at that stage that I needed to win that one match and I probably would have kept my tour card because I think it would have put me in the World Championships. So he knew I'd lost my tour card, he knew he cost me it, and he let me know. But that's Michael. He's quite a jokey character. However, when we look at the round before, last 16, I played Luke Humphreys. Luke Humphreys also knew the situation I was in, and afterwards, that's one of the moments where we had sort of an embrace, and uh, we had like a five-minute cuddle, and he was just encouraging, and he was like, come on go do this, um, sort of supporting and egging me on, despite the fact I've just took him out of the tournament. So that's one thing to remember as well, that the players are, and we pretty much all get on and mostly quite friendly. There's never really any bust-ups. I have had a couple of bust-ups on tour. That video's coming soon. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you are. But I hope you have enjoyed this video, giving a little bit of insight into the sort of conversations. I know it's not overly exciting. You probably hoped it would be a bit more meaty and juicy than what it is. But most of the time... The players aren't happy with the game, and they just tell each other about it. They say it was rubbish. This ain't rubbish. Hit the like button. Catch you soon with some more good TV.